Hey guys, so I have a new pattern coming out in a few weeks. It's the one that I'm wearing right here. And I'll also throw on some pictures that I took the other day to give you a little bit of a better idea of what it looks like. But for this video, I just want to go over some basic pattern information as well as information about the cowl and the kits. So I'm going to break the video up into three parts. So pattern information first, then about the cowl, then about the kits. So if you're here for just one of those parts, you can go ahead and look in the description box and skip to what you want to know about. So it's really, really hot in the room that I'm recording in, so I'm probably not going to keep this sweater on for much longer. But let's talk about basic pattern information. So this is the Lofoten sweater pattern. It is worked from the top down and it's completely seamless. So you start up here and you work down, you do a little bit of short row shaping, which is a lot easier than it sounds. And then you do some drop stitch detailing, which you can see right here. And then you continue down and you finish the yoke. So then once you finish the yoke, you're ready to separate for the sleeves. So you work that round and what you do is you work a little bit and then you place the stitches for one of the sleeves on waist yarn and then you cast on in the middle of a round, which again is a lot easier than it sounds, trust me. Then you work a full section and then you do the same thing for the other sleeve and then you just continue down in the body. So you work down and then bind off and then what you do is you take the stitches that you put on waist yarn and you place them back on your needles and then you pick up a few stitches from the underarm, which again is really easy. I'll show you all how to do it. And then you work it down. It's a very easy and basic construction. So it's not a hard pattern. I think it's a very easy pattern, but it's not necessarily beginner friendly. So I did not design this with beginners in mind, but that being said, if you've never knit a sweater before, I think you can totally do it. And that's one of the great things about this knit along is that we're going to be working it all together at the same time. So if you have questions, you can just ask them in the thread and I'll answer them and I'll have video tutorials and helpful things for you along the way. So this is a totally doable pattern. So as long as I think you have a good understanding of how to knit and how to purl and you know how to knit in the round, I think you can do this. It may take some learning on your end, but if you're willing to just watch some tutorials and practice, I think you can do this no problem. The only way to learn how to do this technique is by practicing it and trying it. So that is what this pattern will be good for. If you want to knit a garment, this is a great, great time to start. Like I said, it's a top-down seamless yoke sweater, and you can make the sleeves either three-quarter length or long, and it comes in 14 adult sizes. So I tried to make this as accessible as possible. So it ranges from 33.5 inches to 66.5 inches, which is 85 to 169 centimeters. So those are the finished sweater measurements. And what that means is that when you have finished your sweater, that is what the bust measurement will be. Now with that being said, I recommend that you choose a size that is four inches larger than your actual bust measurement. So for example, my bust measurement is 36 inches, so I made the size 40 inch, if that makes sense. So it might not be exactly four inches, but as close as you can get to it will be my recommendation. Now that being said, you don't have to do that at all. You could have it be more fitted if you want or more oversized if you want. It's your sweater, do what you want with it. With that being said though, it is a boxy sweater. There's no waist shaping, so it just falls straight down. So if you choose a more fitted size, just know that it won't hug you really tightly on your waist. So that's why I suggest choosing a size that has four inches of positive ease, so it's four inches bigger than your actual bust measurement. So I feel like that gives a nice drape. So it doesn't hug you really tightly, it just kind of falls nice and looks more flattering, in my opinion. But if you feel like a tighter fit would look better on you, go for it. Choose a more tighter fitting size. Or if you want something that is really oversized, you can do that too. Choose a size that has more than four inches of positive ease. This is going to be your sweater, so choose a size that works for you. Alright, so two more things about the pattern. These are the techniques that are used. So it's basically mainly knitting and purling. So there's some detailing down at the bottom here. I don't know if you can see that. So there's little bits of garter ridges. So that is just knitting and purling. It's very, very easy. There's also some drop stitch detailing. 
which you can see right there. That is also very easy. Don't be intimidated by that. It's just a yarn over on one round and then the next round you slide that yarn over off. There's a tutorial for it, you'll be good. So basic knitting and purling, drop stitch, knitting in the round because this is seamless so it's just worked in the round the whole time. You'll do a little bit of increasing in the yoke so that you can fit it around your shoulders. And that is just using a make one right, which I have a video tutorial for as well. And it is very easy. You could learn it in no time. So then for the sleeves, you'll have to put stitches on scrap yarn. Very, very easy. You just thread yarn through a needle and then thread that needle with the yarn through those stitches, tie a little knot on one end, and they're good to go for later. And then you also have to cast on in the middle of a row, which is using a technique called the backwards loop cast on. Super, super easy. You just basically wrap the yarn around your thumb and then slide it onto your needle. No problem, you can do it. I'll have a tutorial for it. It's also a faded sweater. So you'll notice that you fade from one color to another to another. So that involves color changing. So that's another technique that you'll need to use but it is not stranded color work. It is a full round of each color. So it's striping. So you never have to carry floats or anything like that. You just have to switch colors every row or every few rows during the fading sequence. And then you also just have big blocks of one color, which again, very easy to learn if you've never done it before. I'll have tutorials for that as well. So the final technique is to create some back neck shaping using short rows which I know sounds very, very intimidating. I hadn't done them up until a couple months ago. They're very easy to learn. It's the wrap and turn method, which I think is the easiest to start out with. I'll have video tutorials and everything. You can do it. It sounds scarier than it is. And that's the same with all of these techniques. If you've never done them before, they probably sound very intimidating, but trust me, you can do it. And we're gonna be working on this together during the knit along. So if you ever have any questions, I'll be there to answer them and other people can be there to help you. We'll all be doing it together. There are no stupid questions. You can do it. All right, so when it comes to choosing colors, this pattern is written for a three color fade. So what that means is that you start with one color, you fade into a second color, then you fade back into your first color, and then you fade into the third color. So you could use any colors that you want it's totally up to you, but the way that I recommend doing it is that for color one, which is your main yoke color here, I recommend choosing a speckled color, and then for color B, which is this one right here, and color C, I recommend choosing those colors based off of color one. You'll notice that for my color one, it's kind of this bluish purple speckly color, and there's little flecks of green. I don't know how well you can see that, but that green is this green. So there's flecks of green in here, so these blend very well together. And then there's also flecks of purple, and that is this purple down here. So choosing one speckled color, and then two colors in addition to that, that can be found in that speckled color, if that makes sense. That would be my recommendation, but you don't have to do that. That gives it a more blended effect, so that the colors kind of blend together. If you want something a little bit more contrasting, then you could use colors that look good together but aren't speckled like that. So you could use all semi-solids that just kind of look good together, but that gives you a more contrasted look. Or you could use all speckled, and they kind of just all blend together, and it looks cool, but it's not very high contrast. Be creative with it. You can just use whatever you want. You could stash bust. There are kits available if you want to buy them, or you could just go to your local yarn shop and find yarn that works. Okay, so the recommended needle size for the main fabric, everything but the ribbing at the neckline and the cuffs is knit with one needle, and then the cuffs or the ribbing is knit with a smaller needle. So the recommended needle size for the main fabric is a US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter needle, and you'll need it in two sizes. So you'll need it in a 24 inch, which is a 60 centimeter, and a 32 inch, which is an 81 centimeter. Some of my testers found that a 16 inch was much more comfortable than a 24 inch cable, so you might have to play around with that a little bit. And a 32 inch is just kind of the minimum, and it's based on the size you make. But you could also use a larger one. 
So if you make a larger size, then you could use a larger cable, if that makes sense. So if you're making the 33.5 size bust, you're probably not going to want to use a 40 inch cord, if that makes sense. So you just need a shorter cord for the smaller sections of the yoke, either a 16 inch or a 24 inch. And you'll want a longer cord for the body and to do magic loop on the sleeves. And you can use either magic loop, 9 inch circulars, or DPNs for your sleeves depending on your preference. So for the ribbing, I recommend using a US3, which is a 3.25 millimeter needle, and you'll need it in the same cable lengths. Now, that being said, these are only the recommended needle sizes. It really just depends on your gauge. A majority of you will probably not knit with the same tension that I do, so your gauge will be different if you use these needles. So you'll want to swatch. I would recommend not buying all the needles in these sizes right away because you might not get gauge with it. So I would recommend playing around with different needle sizes to see how you can match gauge. And then when you find the main needle size that matches gauge, then buy it in the two sizes and then buy a needle that is two sizes smaller. So the main for the example is made with a US 5 or a 3.75 millimeter and the ribbing is done in a US 3 which is a 3.25 millimeter. But if you match gauge with a US 4 for the main fabric then buy a US 2 for the ribbing. And I'll release what the gauge is in about a week or two so you can go ahead and start swatching and preparing. But swatch first and see what you can match gauge with then buy the other sizes and the cable lengths because otherwise you might buy these four needles and it might not work. And now for the yardage. So like I said, this comes in 14 adult sizes. So I'll just go ahead and throw the yardage amounts on the screen because there are too many for me to list off on my own. So this pattern is written to be worked with three different colors. A main yoke color, an upper body color, and a bottom body color. So you will need the most of color one and color two. Color three you will need the least of. So I can't tell you exactly how many skeins you'll need. So it heavily depends on the size that you're making and the amount of yards in each skein. So if you are buying a skein of yarn that only has 400 yards in a skein, you will need more skeins. So go ahead and pick the size that you wanna make. Again, I recommend choosing one that is around four inches larger than your actual bust size and then go through and look at where that is placed in the yardage and write it down so you know how many you need. And then if you don't have your yarn, you can go ahead and look for yarn that fits within that yardage amount. All right, so that is it for the pattern information. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask them in the comments below, or you can go ahead and head over to the Ravelry group where we're hosting this cowl, and you can ask your questions there and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. So let's talk about the cowl information. So for those of you that don't know, a cowl is a knit along. I always have the hardest time saying that. I don't know if I'm the only one, but it's a knit along. So that means that we are going to be all knitting this pattern up at the same time. And there will be different threads in my Ravelry group for your whips, for questions and things like that and general chatter. And then there will also be an FO thread. So if you wanna get involved in the knit along, that is how you do it. You go ahead and you head to our Ravelry group, which is the Blue Mouse podcast on Ravelry, and I'll link it below in the description. So we all work on this sweater together, and we chit-chat, and we help each other, and we encourage each other, and it's just a lot of fun. And at the end, there will be some prizes. I don't have them fully sorted out yet because I've got like two months to work on it, so I'm starting to build up prizes at the moment. And once I have them built and prepared, I will announce what they are. And if anybody wants to donate anything, please let me know. I would be very appreciative of it. Yeah, so that would be amazing. It starts on the 17th of August, which is a few Fridays from now. And it ends on the 17th of October, which just so happens to be my birthday. <laughs> so it is two months long, and you get an entire eight weeks to work on it. So I pulled you guys in my Instagram story, and most of you said that you needed between seven and eight weeks to knit up a sweater. And so I thought that would be a great starting point. So you've got two months to do it. We're all going to be doing it together and encouraging each other. And then by the end, basically when fall is starting and the weather is starting to turn, you'll have a finished sweater. So 
I think that's a great way to kick off fall. How you can join is by going over to the Ravelry group and joining the group. And then when the cow starts, you can just start posting in the threads and joining in. Yeah, we'll come up with an Instagram hashtag and all that. And, and another note about it is that I know that some people do their knit-alongs in like sections where you only get a certain section per week or something. That's not how I'm going to do it because everybody knits at their own pace. And because this is not a mystery knit-along, I feel like you should just be able to get the pattern and just go because everybody works at different paces. So for some people it might take you four weeks to knit and other people, you know, eight. That way you can just take your time and work on it whenever you wanna work on it at whatever pace is good for you. So one of the questions I got a few times was do I have to get a kit to participate? No, you do not have to buy a kit to participate. You can use whatever yarn you want. We just thought it would be really fun to put together some kits, so I've got two really great indie dyers on board to dye up kits for you guys. So it's totally optional, it's just kind of a fun thing if you want it. Use what works for you. I think that's all the cowl information I have. If you have any more questions, again, just throw them in the comments section or throw them in the thread in our Ravelry group. And finally, let's talk about the kit information. So I am beyond excited to be doing a kit. So I've teamed up with two really great dyers. So I'm teaming up with Allie from Explore Knits and Fibers and Emmy from Emmy Couture. So I'm going to be talking about them in order. Okay, so Allie has put together three different color combos and I'll put them up on the screen so you can see them. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the Fall is Coming kit, which is my personal favorite of hers. Um, I think this one is going to go really, really quickly, but again, they're all great. So this one features Rusty Pipe, which is a new colorway, Vintage Suitcase, and Rust. And the second kit is called Neutrals Forever, and it will have a very subtle fade, I think. Because the colors are so similar, it'll just kind of blend together beautifully, and it'll just go together really, really well. So if you want something more subtle, I think this would be a good option. So this features Polar Bear, Hedwig, and Blackboard. And then finally, the third kit, which is basically a replica of the colors I used to make my original Lofoten sweater. Sorry, this kit is called Into the Wild, and it features Lavender Forever, Mountain Thistles, and Lichen. So they are on her 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon base, which is the same base that I used to make my own. So it's this same base and it is really, really soft. As someone that has a hard time wearing wool, this is really, really soft to me. Okay, so as far as prices go, it really depends on the size that you're making. So for sizes 33.5 through 43.5, it'll be $78. And then for sizes 46.5 through 58.5, it'll be $130. And then for sizes 61.5 through 66.5, it'll be $156. And she has very, very limited slots open. So if you want it, you are going to want to set your calendar for this Sunday at 7 p.m. CST. But you will not want to miss out on that. So those are Allie's kits, and now I'll show you Emmy's kits. So Emmy is going to be dyeing up kits on two different bases. All right, so for kit number one for her, it includes Nature's Sonnet, Greenwood, and Chestnut Tree. So it's the beautiful variegated brown, blue, green, and creamy white mixed with the tonal green and the light brown with speckles. And then for kit number two, it is Diggory, Sour Apple, and To Be Old Fashioned. So that is the brown, purple, and green colorway, which has that really beautiful, vibrant, mossy green in it. So those will be more of a contrasty kind of fade. So if you want something that's more contrasty, this is a great option for you. And it's got that really beautiful olive green, which if you know me, you know that I absolutely love a mossy green like that. So for kit number three, you get a little bit of an option. So it definitely has Pooh Bear, Nutkin, and then for the third choice you can either choose Chestnut Tree, which is the brown, or you can choose Paper Boats, which is the variegated blue. So you can choose if you want a more subtle color blend or if you want something with a little bit more of a pop in it. Okay, so for the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Base, it'll be $72.00 for sizes 33.5 through 43.5, and then it will be $120 for sizes 46.5 through 58.5.
And then finally, it'll be $144 for sizes 61.5 through 66.5. But if you want it on the tweed base, which has slightly less yardage per skein, it'll be $78 for sizes 33.5 through size 40. And then it'll be $104 for size 41.5. And then it'll be $130 for sizes 43.5 through 55. And then it will be... $156 for sizes 58.5 through 66.5. So those are the two dyers that you could buy from. So you can either buy from Allie or Emmy. Allie's kits go on sale this Sunday, July 29th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, so CSD. And then Emmy's go on sale on Monday, July 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern, so Eastern Standard Time. So mark your calendars depending on which kit you want to buy because I think they will go very, very fast. And remember that Allie has a very limited amount of slots because she doesn't have a ton of time to dye before she goes on her trip. So hers will be much more limited than I think Emmy's will. And I will put together a blog post showing you guys all of the color options that you could choose and you'll be able to find the links to the shops and everything. So there are links to their shops in the description. There's a link to our Ravelry group if you want to join the cow and find out more information or ask questions or anything like that. And yeah, that is all the information I have for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me in the comments or in the Ravelry group. And yeah, I hope that you'll join us and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I've never hosted in a long, so this will be fun and new. And again, if you're more of a newer knitter or you never knit a garment, I still think that you should join. It'll be a lot of fun and there'll be a lot of resources to help you if you're willing to learn how to do it. I think you can. So yeah, and if you want to throw in something for the prize pack, please let me know. That would be amazing. <laughs> but either way, thanks for watching guys. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.